Okay, so the next topic we're looking at is percentage composition or percent composition. So essentially what this is going to be is looking at the percent of an element in a compound or a molecule, but referring to the percentage in terms of mass percentage. Okay, so for example, if I had uh, 100 grams of water, how much of that 100 grams would be coming, let's say, just from oxygen atoms? We can do that by looking at what the percent would be of water, oxygen in water. And I'm going to show you the different scenarios you will uh, come across. But uh, in a nutshell, one thing I want you to remember is percent composition is always in reference to mass. So before we look into mass numbers, we will look at a few examples with uh, percent in terms of numbers. Okay, so just so we can have an idea. So we have an example. So Susie's attending a dance at her high school. There's a total of 245 students at the dance. Uh, so 245 students. If 131 of the students identify as being girls, what is the percentage who attended the dance? So let's say percentage of girls. You would always have the number on top is the one we want to know the percentage of. The number on the bottom is always the total number. So in this case, this would be the total number of students times 100. So here we would have uh, 131 over, what was that, 235, 245, 245 times 100. So that gives us 53.5%. Right? So remember that when you're looking at significant digits, percent is actually one of the exceptions to sig figs. So for this, you could just leave the percentage as whatever it happens to be when you go to calculate this. Okay? So typically, if we were in school and this was uh, pre COVID times, Maybe you're watching this at a much later date and uh, we are now post COVID times, uh, but right now we are in COVID times. So normally what I would do is I give students a baggie of Fruit Loops. Right? So you have a whole bunch of different colored Fruit Loops inside, kind of like this, obviously not that many. And I assign the groups a color. So let's say green. We want us to know the percent of green Fruit Loops. So whatever you want to know the percent of, you would have had to count all the total number of Fruit Loops, so the total number of Fruit Loops in the bag, and your numerator would have to be what you want to know the percent of. So this would be, let's say, green Fruit Loops. So, and of course, times 100 afterwards. So let's say we end up getting, you know, we had 100 Fruit Loops and there was 25 Fruit Loops in the bag. So that means we would have 25% green Fruit Loops. All right, so we're looking, Right now, those two examples, so the dance, students at the dance and Fruit Loops, are percentages by numbers. When we're dealing with percent composition, we're dealing with percent by mass, okay? But the procedure is the same. That's why I, I go through those examples. The value on top is the one thing that you want to know the percent of, whether it's green Fruit Loops or whatever it happens to be. The number that's on the denominator is always the total number. So whether it's the total number of Fruit Loops, total number of students, whatever the total number is of whatever it happens to be, times 100. Okay, so this, is, this setup is not going to change for us. Okay, so let's start talking about, you know, data with mass values. So the mass of an element um, does not necessarily make up the entire compound, right? So you might have, uh, you know, I always go back to the water example. There are two elements here. Those two elements make up the entire compound, but the mass of one is going to be different than the mass of the other. And of course, we know that because they have different weights. They have different molar mass values. So the percentage is always the same. Mass of one element that you want to know the percent of over the total mass times 100. So let's look at an example. I'll do one and then I'll have you try one out. So a compound has a mass of 48.72 grams. So the mass of the compound 
is 48.72 grams. And it's found to contain two different elements. So we have the mass of zinc. So I always use these little subscripts as kind of uh, identifying what this mass is for. So mass of zinc was 32.69 grams. And then the mass of sulfur is 16.03 grams. So what is the percent composition of the sample? So notice they're not being specific. They're not saying what is the percent of zinc or what is the percent of sulfur. They want to know what is the percent of the sample. So what that means is we're going to have to solve for the percent for each element. So unless it asks you for a specific element, um, it would be for any element that's in the compound. So in this case, we have two different elements. We have um, zinc and we have sulfur. Okay. So let's take a look. We have, okay, so the mass of zinc. So remember, it's always the mass of what we want to know the percent of over the mass of the entire thing, which is 48.72 grams, times 100. For sulfur, it's going to be 16.03 grams divided by the mass of the entire thing times 100. Okay, so let's calculate this out. Okay, so for zinc, we end up with 67.10% and sulfur is 32.90%. So if you do this properly, okay, you should get... Um, all the elements that are in the compound, if you were to add up the percentages, they should add up to close to 100%. So if there were five elements, the five elements to combine should be close to 100%. Now it might be a little bit off. You might have, you know, 100.01% or 99.99%. It's because it depends on how much these values have been rounded or depends really on the data that's given for each element. But they should be pretty darn close. Okay, so give this one a try. Find the percent composition of a substance that contains only 7.22 grams of nickel, 2.53 grams of phosphorus, and 5.25 grams of oxygen. All right, so you should have noticed that you did not have any information about the total mass yet. So because we have the individual elements, you should have been able to realize that you could add up to find your total mass. So if you take each of these mass values, you add them up, you get 15.00 grams. Okay, so for percent of nickel, I'm going to show one in full, just so you can see the number placement. And then I'll just give the rest of the answer. So 7.22 grams divided by 15.00 grams times 100 should have given us 48.1% of nickel. So you do the exact same thing for the others except with, of course, the mass of what they are. So phosphorus was 16.9 grams and oxygen was 35.0 gram, uh, percent. I was going to say grams, percent. All right, so what we're going to look at now is, well, if we're not given the mass value from a chemical compound, so just like before we were given the mass of nickel or the mass of oxygen, what if we were given information only about the chemical formula? So for example, let's say we were looking at hydrogen peroxide, okay? So there's two atoms of hydrogen, two atoms of oxygen. But that does not mean that 50% of the mass is hydrogen and 50% of the mass is oxygen. That's numbers. Oh, excuse me. Oh, excuse me. Pardon me. So, uh, you know it's real, right? So, when you're looking at percentage by mass, you have to take into account the weight of the elements and the weight of the total compound. So here, the reason why we're able to do that is because of the fact that the law of definite proportions holds true. 
So Dalton is actually the person who originated this idea and it's still held true today. So what that means is it doesn't matter really, like in a nutshell, it does not matter how many of this molecule or particle you have, the elements are always in the same proportion by mass. So meaning, if I have two hydrogens and two oxygens, I will always have the same percent of hydrogen mass and oxygen mass because I have the same number. Of course, if I have something different like H2O, now this is going to be its own unique um, proportions because it's a different molecule. But if we're talking about the exact same compound or the exact same particle, the percent of mass should always be a constant. So why is that important? Right, so the percentage of each element will be constant by mass. So what that means is if you know the percent composition of an element or of a compound, it's always going to be the same, no matter how much you actually have of it. So how are we going to be able to do that? Well, let's look at an example here. So water we know is always two hydrogen for every one oxygen. So the percent composition, we can actually use the molar mass information from the periodic table to determine the percent composition. So what that means is, if I know the molar mass values, I can essentially determine what the percentage would be in the same way that I've been doing. So to figure out the percent of oxygen, I would put the molar mass of oxygen over the molar mass of the entire thing. And then, of course, times 100, which I ran out of room here. Uh, let's see. Let's shift this over. So I can show you. Times 100. Right? So let's do that. So we have the molar mass of hydrogen, the molar mass of oxygen. Remember, to get the molar mass of a molecule, you add up everything that it's, that's in it. So two hydrogens plus one oxygen gives us a molar mass of 18.02 grams per mole. So if I wanted to figure out the percent of hydrogen, one thing to keep in mind is I have to put the mass of all the hydrogen over the total molar mass. So I can't just put one atom of hydrogen because in this molecule there are two. So when you're going to figure out the mass percent of hydrogen, this is going to be two times the molar mass of hydrogen over the entire thing, right? So when we're figuring out the molar, the percent of oxygen, we only have to do one atom of oxygen because there's only one in water. So let's calculate this. So we have here 2.02 divided by 18.02, 2.02 times 18, pardon me, divided by 18.02 times 100. That gives us 11.2%. Okay, so hydrogen's 11.2%. If we look at oxygen, right, so it would be the mass, the molar mass of oxygen over the molar mass of the entire thing times 100. So this is going to be 16.00 grams per mole because remember there's only one atom of oxygen here. Oh, shoot, I forgot I had it down here already. <laughs> anyways, here we go. So there's our, our numbers that I was going to plug in anyways. We get 88.8%. And I've already mentioned to you, your elements should add up to a number very close to 100. Okay, so... um. Give this one a try. You should be able to give this a try at this point in time. So we want the percent composition of glucose, and the formula is here. So remember, if it does not specify which element, that means we want the percent for each one. So percent carbon, percent hydrogen, and percent of oxygen.